So, in Precy to what we've done here, which is to create all these prefabricated parts, this is what it allows you to build. This is, you know, just a small sample of it as well. All we've done is use doorways as corridors, widened them in places, stuck a floor on, and in this case I've just stuck a little bit of um, lighting up here and then you know this is just a daylight system and then mashed render and it's came out fine now as you can see it's under 30,000 polygons even though I've expanded it to this large piece here and if I show you how it's broken up I mean you can see we've got these two buttresses from here on both sides we've got these here and if you're wondering about the corridor parts I'll just duplicate it for you here all the corridor part is is the door area with the door chopped off and then symmetry applied and for the wider ones all I did was break it in half and then fill these parts down the middle it's nothing especially difficult okay I'm not doing one of the famous kind of chopper ways where you're not going to see how this is done this is all just the same prefabs as we made in all the previous parts the only difference is I've stuck an Autodesk stone material on it, which I made vaguely yellowy red, which I think is orange, and I've stuck a sunlight system on it. And that's it. And by doing that, if I just find a mash render, I'll just find a nice angle to do it from, maybe here. Okay, uh, there we go. You'll see I've got Final Gather turned on. but it doesn't take very long at all to do this there so that's the final gather just about calculated I think it's doing a couple of passes yep two passes on final gather because I set it to medium because it defaults to draft and I've also changed the rendering aspect ratio because I prefer this wide screen so I can look at it it kind of reminds me of a kind of old school picture which I quite like Autodesk Stone also has auto weathering the material, so that's why it'll look a little bit strangely patchy in places, which I quite like. I also increased the, um, like I say, I increased the final gather points by just increasing the slider to medium. It should pick up on the uh, breaks in the stonework and the brickwork. Isn't this exciting? And I mean, literally, you can make this as big as you want, which is fun. You can also curve it slightly if you wanted to. That's not especially difficult. And curving it slightly, I mean, it'd be best if you attached the um, buttresses to it before you applied a slight bend. And by slight, I mean very, very slight. In fact, I might show you how to do it in a minute, once this is finished. However, it'll give you options for creating kind of curved wings and things like that. And the good thing about that is that then you can include this, you know, for some of your other renders or models as backgrounds or on its own. I mean, literally, you can just throw textures on this and use it in a game engine. It's so simple to do. Right, here comes the renderer. These are my four very slow buckets. And you can just about see the places where the brickwork is. We've got our three different sized buttresses, obviously. Can't see our windows from here, which is a shame. I really should have adjusted that more. Just let it render out. I think I'll show you how to uh, make the wider corridor, perhaps, anyway. It's not especially difficult, like I said. Well, the long corridor. Because then I can explain or show you how to do the uh, kind of bending of it as well, which will be down to where the pivot is. You just have to be very careful with it because you don't want to misposition or bend your actual um, buttresses. They have to continue to appear straight. It's 
nice though, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. So, um, again, just to kind of show you the material, I'll just stop it. Unfortunately, the recording kind of failed the time before. But here you go, you can see I'm using Autodesk Concrete as the stone. And there's the colour there. Okay. Finish pumps is smooth and automatic weathering. And over here I'm just using a default stainless steel map. Okay, so... I said I was going to show you how to do this, and I suppose I shall, because I'm feeling kind. It doesn't take more than a moment. To make a corridor, just take our entryway, and what I'm going to do is just hit F3, try and get this as straight as I can. So I'm going to go marquee select straight down here, click connect. It's not going to be straight, even though it looks like it isn't. Just straighten it immediately. Okay, now I'm going to select just these ones. Control I and delete those ones. It's just a little bit faster. Now I can just expand this out. And I've got this. Next, I'm going to use symmetry. The reason I use symmetry is because it will automatically weld this part together. Okay, and just click here. And when it goes yellow, obviously I'm manipulating the modifier itself. Now, when I've got this tiny gap here, if I just click flip. Now I've got a corridor, you see. That's how easy it was. Now, if I just, you know, find the parts I want to use on this, so. I'll grab these and put them here like that. Okay, that works quite well. Maybe separate them out a little bit more. And you can build windows into the side of this if you want. Just use the previous method that we used. Now if you're going to bend this, you want to attach these. going to literally stick them on like this or you can use an array and you want a lot if you're doing it this way because if you have too few then the curvature is going to be extremely apparent when it comes to your um, buttresses and yes you are allowed to find the word buttress funny Now, if I just stick a bend modifier on this, and then just start working on the angle. <laughs> quite like that, actually. It's quite funky. You can actually use an FFD to uh, increase the size of your buttresses as well. But let's change the direction to 90 degrees off this plane. So let's find the bend axis we want to move it on. Which presumably is going to be something like the Y axis. No, oh, X axis, that'll do. Change it to 90 degrees. And, right, now I'll curve it in too much at first. And then you can have a look at the buttresses and how they're curving. You see, it's not immediately noticeable. It's only a minor move. However, obviously the more that you bring them in, they're going to start looking like cheese slabs after a while, yeah? So, I mean, it's good to a certain point, but I wouldn't have the angle too sharp. Because you don't really need to, yeah? I mean, it's still going to work. Now, remember what we were saying before as well about FFDs? An FFD 2x2, two two, just click there to open the modifier panel and just grab here. We'll allow you to do that. 
which is kind of nice. Certainly good for making a false perspective look. <laughs> I love false perspective. Okay, so these are some options you can do anyway. Like I say, using the corridor allows you to build massive structures like this, just to kind of demonstrate I'll just chop some of this off. Just to show you how quick and easy it is to build things using this. It's easier if you have F4 pressed. I'll get rid of these uh, metal things. Just don't scale things, whatever you do. Okay, so all I've done is I've used two corridors. This is a thin one off the door, and this is a slightly larger one. Same one from the door, just with an extra segment down the middle. Yeah. Now, if I want to, you know, add this to it, let's assume that I do. For whatever reason, I just select all the parts that make it up that I want. And then don't mirror, just flip it round 180 degrees. And then just stick it there. Okay, just it's best to make sure that it's not really intersecting, it's just lying on top of as much as possible. You don't have to have it exactly balanced out, you can move it to one side if you prefer. And then in this space here, it's quite hard sometimes getting these little jags. There we go. You can literally drag it to there. And then if you want to, you could, you know, build a landing pad, or you could just go to town, just build whatever the hell you want on here. That's the way it works. And that's how easy it is to build additional parts. And the lighting system, like I say, all it is, is a daylight system. Sunlight's metal ray sun. Daylight, metal ray, sky, and I just change the time to four o'clock in the afternoon, just so the sun comes down like that. If you think the little top part here is a little bit empty, you can always put something up there. Ideally, you will be wanting to view it from down here anyway, but you can make these kind of cloisters as big as you want, because that's technically what they are. Now then, let's uh, get a shot of the windows in as well. Just get a nice shot of this, and it'll give us something to end on. There we go. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative and valuable. And uh, for the sponsor members who downloaded this for free, there'll be something else out soon. Until then, bye-bye for now.